my friends. We've come here today on October the 31st to tell you about a message from the Bible. We've brought a message from the God of heaven, the God who loves you, the God who created both heaven and earth, the very God who holds your life and your breath in his hand, the very God who's given you a life here on earth, the very God who sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I've come with a message for you today. I've not come to talk about politics, even though it's a very interesting subject. I've not come to talk about sports, even though sports have finally started up, it seems again, and we're getting back to normal with that. I've not come to talk about either of those things. I've not come to talk about religion. Religion, my friend, is just empty, useless garbage. It's just man's idea of how they can please God. Religion, if you look at all the religions of the world, you look at the Roman Catholics, you look at Muslims, you look at the Jews with Judaism, all their religion, they all have one thing in common. They all have a great big list of things that they do in order to try and please God. Yet, my friend, the sad fact is that it doesn't please God. The fact is, all of their good works, all of the very best things they people can do, it doesn't get them any closer to heaven. There's only one way that people can be saved, and that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. So I have come today, I have three things that I have found in the Bible that I would like you to remember. You know, the Bible is full of things to remember. My friend, first of all, I'd like to read a verse in Luke chapter 17 and verse 32. It says, remember Lot's wife. It's one of the shortest verses in the Bible. Luke 17, 32. Remember Lot's wife. Secondly, in Luke 23 and 42, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And lastly, in Luke 16 and 25, but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So three things to remember, my friend. First of all, when looking at this person, Lot's wife. She was a woman who lived a long, long time ago in the ancient city of Sodom and Gomorrah. A very wicked city. It was a city that was very advanced in many ways. They were medically advanced. They were very advanced in their language. They were very technologically advanced for their time. But you know what? There was one great problem with the city. And when God looked down on that city, he saw that the city was full of wickedness. Every man did that which is right in his own eyes. And there was nothing that in that city that pleased God. Much like the city of Toronto that we're in today. The city here, Toronto, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the place where I come from, which is called Oshawa, many cities there are today, and if you take all the cities in the world, the great cities, the small towns, the little villages and farms, there's one thing that each of these places have in common, the fact that the people who live in them have sinned against God, willingly in their actions, in their words, and in their thoughts. Every intention of mankind's heart is only on evil continually, and it hasn't changed for thousands of years. And that is a great problem, my friend. So this lady, Lot's wife, you know, she lived in a wicked city. But you know what? Even though it was a wicked city and it was about to be judged by God, God is about to rain fire and brimstone down in that city and completely wipe it off the face of the earth. But even though that was true, 
God had provided a way that Lot and his wife and their family could be saved. And as they fled the city, as Lot was seeking to do what God had told him to, Lot's wife, she turned back. You know what, Lot's wife, she truly, even though she knew that God had provided a way that they could escape, Lot's wife didn't care. She loved her sin. She loved the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And her attraction to her sin and to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah was so great that even though she was about to be delivered, she turned back. And you know what, my friend? I have good news for you today, and I have bad news. First of all, you, just like this lady, Lot's wife, you've sinned, and you've come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, my friend. That is the very word from the heart of God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you know what, my friend? Just like this lady, Lot's wife, and just like her family, a way was provided for them. And just like that, a way has been provided for you for your sins. And for me and my sin. The Lord Jesus Christ came from heaven. And you know what? He came to this earth of wickedness. He came and he saw people in their sin. And he had compassion on them. And he went to the cross. And he was nailed on the cross. And as he hung there between heaven and earth, he took all the judgment from God that we deserve for our sins. And my friend, even though we deserve to go to hell, even though we deserve to be judged for our sins because we've committed awful and heinous things against God, even though all of this is true, the Lord Jesus Christ took the penalty for our sins that we deserve. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him, and with his stripes we are healed. My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, and he died for you, my friend. That's why the Lord Jesus came into the world. That's why on December 25th of each year, there's this thing called Christmas. If you look at the first words of Christmas, you look, Christ, for the whole point of December 25th, of Christmas is to celebrate that time where the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world so that he might die for you. So remember Lot's wife, the woman who had a chance to be saved from her sins and had a chance to be saved from judgment to come, and yet she turned back. Secondly, I'd like to look at this person who said to the Lord Jesus, remember me when thou comest again in thy kingdom. And my friend, there was on the cross beside the Lord Jesus, there's another man on the cross, and he had committed wicked sins against the government. He had raised a big crowd and he had killed, he had stolen from people, and he was in complete opposition to the government. He was a rebel. And this man was being punished for his sins, and he even said so to the other thief who was on the other side of the Lord Jesus. He said that we do receive due reward of our deeds. And he realized about the Lord Jesus Christ, this man had done nothing amiss. You know, when this man hung beside the Lord Jesus Christ, he realized, you know what? I am here dying. I am here being punished for my sin. I'm not here being punished. I'm not here dying because of Paul Bernardo's sins. I'm not here dying because of my friend's sins or my family's sins. I'm here dying because of my sins. But he looked at the Lord Jesus and he realized, you know what? This one, the Lord Jesus, he doesn't have any sins. And you know what? He realized that the Lord Jesus Christ, he didn't have any sins, but he was dying for his sins. For the sins of this man on the cross who was bleeding and dying for this thief who deserved truly to die. He realized the Lord Jesus Christ, he's dying for me. And he said to the Lord Jesus, Remember me. Remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. He realized this. The Lord Jesus Christ, he is king. He is Lord of all. And he realized that if I only put my faith and my trust in the Lord Jesus, 
I'll be completely forgiven of my sin. And so, my friend, you said, remember me. My friend, it is the, it is the wish, the dire wish of our hearts that you would be saved, that you would realize like this man on the cross, you'd realize that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you, that you would realize that even though you deserve to be judged for your sins by a righteous and holy God, we, our prayer for you today is that you'd realize that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you. My friend, Isaiah chapter 53, it says, he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, John 3 and 16 says that whosoever believes in Him, in the Lord Jesus Christ, shall not perish, but have everlasting life, my friend. Do you want to live in heaven once you die? My friend, there's going to come a time where you will die. And all that will matter is this. Have I trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior? Have my sins been forgiven? My friend, the Lord Jesus Christ died for you. And if you're only to simply trust and put your faith in Him, you will be saved from your sins. You'll be forgiven, and you'll have a home in heaven forever. Thirdly, look at this man to whom Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. My friend, this third person here, he was a very rich person, he had lots of money, he had a good family, he had a good job, he had food on the table, he had every possible thing that you could want in this world. But you know, there was one thing he didn't have, he didn't have his sins forgiven, he didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior. A sad thing, my friend, it's a sad thing to not have the Lord Jesus as your Savior. It's a sad thing to continue on through life and to know that your sins are not taken care of, your sins are not forgiven. And this man, he lived and he died. My friend, let me remind you again of the fatal statistics. 10 out of 10 people will die. My friend, there's a day coming where you are going to breathe your last, whether it be from COVID, whether it be from a heart attack, whether it be from cancer, whether it be from a car accident, you will die, my friend. Are you ready to die? That's a question that many people today don't like to face. People don't like to think about death. But the fact is, my friend, you are going to die. The Bible says, and compare it unto men, once to die, and after this, the judgment. So, my friend, are you ready to die? This man was not ready to die. He didn't know that his sins were forgiven, and he was still condemned. And you know what? This man went to hell. It's a sad, sad story. It says that he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. My friend, he was in such brutal agony. He was in that place called hell, which is a sad place to talk about, but it's a reality. There's a real place called hell. And my friend, Unless you repent of your sins and trust the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation, you will be like this man who woke up in hell and raised their eyes and they were in torment. And you know what this man said? This man, he wanted to have comfort from Lazarus, a man that he knew in life. This man was up in heaven and he could see afar off this man Lazarus and this man Abraham were up in heaven. You could see them. And he says, send Lazarus, that he might dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But you know what this man Abraham said, son, remember, thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. And, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. What this man Abraham was saying was this, when it came to your life, you had comfort. You had all these great things, but you, you didn't have what really mattered. You didn't know that your sins were forgiven. You didn't have a home in heaven. And my friend, let me stress this point to you today. If you were to go through life and become like this rich person, if you were to collect the same large amount of money as Bill Gates, if you were as rich as Bill Gates, and you had a large sum of money, you had a good relationship, you had a good family, 
You had good food on the table. If you were to accumulate everything you could ever want in life and die in your, without, die in your sins without the Savior, that wonderful life of satisfaction and comfort would be worth absolutely nothing. My friend, if you were to have the best life that you could ever imagine, just if you were to imagine in your head right now, if you had every single thing you wanted, if you had achieved every goal, if you had received every blessing that you can receive here on earth, and you were to not trust the Savior and you were to go to hell, my friend, it, your life here on earth would be worth nothing. Like the Lord Jesus could say about a man named Judas, a man who had everything, and yet he decided not to trust the Savior and he went to hell. Jesus said about that man, it would have been better if he had never been born. My friend, at the end of your life, at your funeral, when you are laying in the casket, still and cold in death, will, the, will it be true of you, my friend, that even though you had such wonderful things in life, even though you were a pretty good person by the world's standards, Will it be true of you that you died without forgiveness of your sins? My friend, in God's estimate, for one to die in their sins without forgiveness, it'd be better if they had never been born, if they had never taken a breath, if they had never, ever seen the light of day. My friend, we don't want you to go to hell. We're not here telling you about this to be cruel and calloused. We're here to tell you and to warn you so that you might trust the Savior. You might turn from your sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is a word of assurance, my friend. It's not saying you might be saved. It's not saying, you know, you hope you can be saved. It's saying if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, 100% for sure, you will be saved. So, my friend, Remember these three people. Remember Lot's wife, the lady who was completely condemned in her sins and had a chance to escape the judgment that God was going to give to her. And yet she turned and she decided to have her sins rather than to be saved. Remember this thief on the cross, the one who looked to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember how he could say, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ can save you if you just trust in Him. And lastly, remember this man, this rich man in hell, who lifted up his eyes, being in torment. So it says, remember that thou in thy lifetime refused thy good things. Remember that this rich man, even though he had everything he could have possibly wanted, he died in his sins and he was in hell. My friend, remember this. You can have everything in life that you could possibly want. But unless your sins are forgiven, it's worth absolutely nothing. Trust the Savior, my friend, and have spiritual riches, riches that will last forever. Have a, you'll have a home in heaven, a place where there's no crying, no tears, no sorrow, there's no pain, there's no sickness. If you're to trust the Savior, that's where you'll be forever. My friend, trust the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you'll have a home in heaven. And if you have any questions to ask me, or my friend, if there's something that you do not understand, please come, and we are giving away free Bibles, and we can answer your questions. My friend, trust the Lord Jesus Christ, whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life.